So this is the second pairing of our male Monty to our female Olivia. Now, in this footage you'll see some little bits of stuck shed. This is actually the first time I've ever had a bad shed from snakes. Um, they both came out with uh, really tattered sheds, so they weren't complete sheds. But um, for the most part, they've got it all off and it's all good, so I just left it to it. It will amend itself. It's the second pairing. The first pairing I didn't feel like filming. Um, I prioritised making sure that they had the privacy to actually lock and get a good lock first time round. And then on the second lock, as it's just my uh, repeat lock, that's when I chose to film because I wasn't so worried about disturbing them because I've already had them lock once. I introduced Monty from the Vivarium below up to Olivia. And he went straight in, went straight, he just went flying straight into her hide. And then it was like a bit, bit of commotion. And I was like, right, is this mating? Or is like, she decided to like nab him. So I obviously like, I pulled the rock that was on the hide off. And, uh, and as soon as I pulled the rock off, the hide lifted because they were all rustling around. And what you can see here is that he's actually holding her by the nape of her neck. As he's trying to align the cloakers here to get a successful lock. I just really enjoy seeing all the natural behaviours. You don't necessarily tend to see this kind of thing. Unless you're actually obviously pairing snakes. So to see these quite elaborate mating behaviours. And the little twitches and rhythmic contractions of their body. Especially the male. I find really interesting. I did see a hemipene pop out at some point. Visually. But they changed angles so many times. Um that I couldn't see the lock in this footage. But I paired them at around 8pm, and they were together in that position, stationary, until around 2am. So he was no longer trying to move his tail in this rhythmic way to find the cloaca to lock. He was quite happily sat in a position for hours upon hours. So I assume, based upon that behaviour, they did get a second successful lock. When I put them together... The first time I attempted it, it was prior to her post brumation shed. And she had no interest whatsoever. As soon as she had that shed, I paired them and they literally got at it straight away. That first lock was on the second. And this lock that you're seeing right now happened on the 15th. So if this comes out on the 20th, it will be five days ago that this happened. She has her humid hide, which has cocoa core inside it. Now, she's always had a humid hide, so she should know exactly where she wants to lay. When I actually purchased this female, the previous owner said she was very prone to double clutching. So it'll be interesting to see if that will happen. I'm not going to go overboard and try and overfeed to try and get her to double clutch. But if it happens because she's going to do it anyway then I'm quite content with that. But I'm not going to overfeed her during this period just to get her to double clutch. Hopefully I'm going to try and get footage of the egg laying and I'm going to do a video on incubation and what I'm going to do with the incubation and then hopefully we'll get some cool footage of the little baby MBKs pipping and hatching and whatnot. I'm not going to egg cut, so if they hatch, they hatch. If they don't, they don't. But it'll be cool to get some cute footage of some little black shoelaces on the channel. That'd be quite cute. If anyone's looking to see some really nice footage of baby MBKs this year, then obviously subscribe because those videos are going to be coming down the line.